Hey, it's Will back with another After Effects tutorial. If you've spent any time with 3D and After Effects, you might know that you can create light sources and objects that cast shadows, but there isn't really a 2D equivalent for it. There is this little hack though that's actually a lot of fun to play with. So you don't actually need a light source to pull this off. The shadows can be projected on their own, but for demonstration purposes and to show you how cool you can make it look, we're gonna use this circle I made. And related to that, I wanna say that all these effects I have on the circle to make it look sorta of like a star don't have anything to do with the shadows themselves. Now let's get into it. The first thing you'll need is just a background. Literally just make a solid layer and you're good. It can be any color you want, but obviously you'll want something that shows the shadows, so don't use black unless you want to cast white shadows or something, which you can totally do if you think it'd work. Next, you'll want a shape layer, which can be anything your heart desires. I've just made some circles and note that all of them are in the same shape layer. You can have different shape layers if you want, like if you wanted to apply different effects to different shapes, but try to keep the number of layers down just for the sake of simplicity and improving your workflow. Now for our first real effect, which you can find in Effect, Generate, Fill. And perhaps counterintuitively, we're gonna use this to paint over our nice shapes with the color we want for our shadow. Don't worry, we'll get the original color back in a minute. Our color for our shadows is of course usually gonna be black or close to black. Now to actually make those shadows, let's go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Radial Fast Blur. Set the amount to however much you'd like. I'm gonna go with 95, which is honestly pretty intense, but I wanna put an emphasis on the shadows so you can see how they move. Also, if you want clear, well-defined shadows, you'll want to change the zoom setting from standard to brightest. That being said, I actually like the rough look that the standard gives us, so I'm gonna use that. It isn't realistic, but it looks really cool. And now it's time to animate our shadows by moving the center of the blur effect. As you can see, when we move it around, all these shadows move accordingly. Now, if you didn't want to use a light source, you can just move the center in whatever way works for your project, but if you want to make your shadows react to something like my circle, here's what you do. You need to go into the blur's effect controls down in your timeline and look for where it says center, and you'll see this little pick whip icon next to it. We're going to use this to parent the center of the blur to the light, but you can't do it directly like this. If you want it to work, you need to parent it specifically to the light's position, so open up the position controls and then drag the pick whip to it like this. And now whatever your light source does, whether it's sitting still or moving around your composition, the shadows will react and move along with them. Lastly, let's get the original color of our shapes back by going to Effect, Channel, CC Composite. And we don't have to do anything to this one. It just brings the color of the original shape back into view. And that's all there is to it. These shadows can be used to make a bunch of visually stunning effects. So give it a shot and let us know how it goes. If you're looking to save time and produce awesome work right here in After Effects and Premiere Pro, check out our links below to get access to our Motion Duck extension, which contains thousands of editable templates that are easy to update and ready to go for any commercial, client, and personal project.